Hey everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a seamless wave pattern in Affinity Designer for iPad version two. If you're on the desktop version, you can easily follow along. So let's get started. I have a 4,000 pixel canvas set to 300 DPI. I find this works best for all of my print on demand needs when I'm creating my seamless patterns. I've also set up a second artboard that I've labeled pattern tester, which I'm going to use with the gradient tool to test my pattern once it's done. The first thing we want to do is create our bullseye shape and I'm going to use my ellipse tool and vector flood fill tool to create mine. When creating geometric patterns like this one, you want to work with shapes that will evenly divide into your canvas. That's going to allow you to tile them quickly and easily without the need for using symbols, a pattern preview, or a template. If you do feel more comfortable using any of those, please feel free to. I'm going to create a 1000 pixel bullseye shape, which will work perfectly with my 4000 pixel canvas. I have my ellipse tool selected and I'm going to begin to drag out and then hold three fingers down so that it sizes out a perfect circle from the center. Now I've gone above 1000, so with it selected, I'll go to the Transform Studio. I'll make sure that this middle is engaged so that these are locked and I'll key in 1000. Now I want to duplicate this four times. I'm going to use those duplicates to create the bullseye shape. So I'll hold my finger down and hit duplicate and I'll do that four times. Power duplicate wouldn't work in this instance because the way designers power duplicate works, it's cumulative, which means that every time you size down, the next time it does it, it's going to be based on the last shape. So we would end up with an unevenly spaced bullseye. In my case, I want to create a bullseye that's evenly spaced at 200 pixels between each stroke. I'm going to go to the second ellipse here and with it selected, go to my transform panel. Again, making sure that the lock in the middle is engaged. I also want to make sure that the anchor at the bottom here is set to center. That's going to size it down into the circle. And I'll change this one to 800. I'm going to go to each ellipse and change it so that I, again, I have 200 pixels of space between each one. So my last one will be 200. And now I have my bullseye shape. This is a good shape to group up and put into your assets so that you have it whenever you want to create a shape like this one. That way you don't have to start fresh each time. I'm going to use the vector flood fill tool to create my background ellipse. Now I could just grab my ellipse shape and drag out a shape but this is quicker and I'm going to get the exact size I need. So I'm going to select all of my strokes because I need to do that in order to use the vector flood fill tool. I'll engage the tool first. You always want to make sure that you select it first before you select your fill because it's going to remember the last one you used. And I'm going to go into my swatches and I think I'll use this mustard color. So with all of these selected, I'm going to click and drag into the center. And because I didn't pick my pencil up, I end up with one curve. Now that I have my fill in place, I'm going to adjust my strokes a bit. The first thing that I want to do is change them so that they're aligned into the circle. In other words, they're aligned to the inner part. Right now they're aligned to center. So you can see the stroke goes right through the center of the line. That's causing part of it to go outside of my selection, which is going to cause issues with the overall pattern. So I'll go up to my stroke studio and I want to align inside. And now everything is within the bounds of my selection. I'm going to keep the width as is. I want to turn on scale with object. I kept it off while I was creating these shapes because as I scaled down, I didn't want them to get thinner. But now that they're all in place, I'm going to make sure that that's on in case I do size this up and down at all. And then one final thing I'll do is just change the color. I'm gonna select the same color and then just drag up on the color dot here just to make it a bit lighter. With all of my shapes selected, I'm going to group this up and I'll label this bullseye. So this is my final shape and we're ready to start tiling this. Before I do anything else, I want to go up to the top here and just make sure that snapping is on. That's going to make the process a lot easier. With that engaged, I'm going to drag this down to the bottom left corner so that only a quarter of the circle is showing. And with snapping on, it's going to show you when you're at that exact point. I get a green and a red line, and you can see that only a quarter of my circle is in place. Now, since this is going off the canvas, 
we're going to need to complete that on the other side. But again, because we used a shape that evenly divides into our canvas, that's going to be very easy. So I'm going to use my Transform Studio and Power Duplicate to move this 1000 pixels to the right all the way across until I'm at the other side with duplicates. So with this selected, I'll hold my finger down and choose Duplicate. I'll go to my Transform Studio. And on the X axis under Position, I want to key in 1000, the exact size of my shape. That's created a duplicate. And as long as I create, I keep this selected, I can just Power Duplicate it all the way across. Now, while 1000 pixels divides into my canvas evenly four times, remember I have a shape on the left that needs to be completed on the right. So that's why we have an extra shape here. And it is important that you start off outside of the canvas because with rounded shapes like this one, as you tile up, you're going to start to see gaps. So I'm going to use this to create my second row. Before I do that, I'll go to my layers, and I'm going to group this and name, name this first. I'll duplicate this and I'm going to use my Transform Studio to offset to this, this to the right 500 pixels. That's going to send them to the middle. So I'll do plus 500. Again, that's half the size of my shape so that they're sitting in between the original ones. And then I want to go up minus 250. So that's half of the other offset on the x-axis. This is going to make it so that the shape is more of a wave rather than a bullseye where you'd see more of the overall shape. So under the Y, I'll key in minus 250 because I'm going up, you need to use minus. Now this layer needs to tuck behind the original one. So I'm just going to go up to my layers panel and drag it beneath. And now I have the final motif that I'm going to pattern all the way to the top. Before I do that, there are a couple of things that I want to do to this second layer. The first is I'm going to open it up and I'm going to remove this bullseye that's hanging off the canvas because it's not necessary. I like to clean things up just to make sure I'm working with exactly what I need. The second is I'm going to change the name of this layer to second, and then I'll group both of these up and I'm going to label this final. That may seem like overkill as far as naming my layers, but we're eventually going to have to go back into one of those and find a very specific layer. So it's a good idea to label them before you start making layers for the entire canvas. This is our final motif that we're going to tile up to the top. Now there are two very specific steps at the end that I'm going to show you to ensure you have no gaps. But this first part is going to be relatively simple. We're going to use Power Duplicate to tile this all the way to the top. So I've selected it. I'm going to duplicate it. I'll go to my transform panel and I need to use this on the first one to let designer know how I want to offset every other one. I don't need to do anything on the X, but on the Y, I'm going to offset it minus 500. Now I need to go up to my layer stack and drag that duplicate underneath the last one. So we want to tuck each duplicate under the last one created. So I need to maintain my selection here because from here, I no longer need the transforms to studio until the end, but I need power duplicate, which means I need to keep this selected. Now it's a good idea in this case to engage the thumbtack here on your layers to keep it open because every time you duplicate, you're going to drag it to the bottom of the stack. So I'll hold my finger down, duplicate, drag it to the bottom. And I'm going to do that until I get to the top. All right, so it might seem like I'm actually done because it looks like the canvas is filled. If I zoom in very carefully here, you can see that I have a gap at the top where my two bullseyes at the very top are not touching. And this one is not actually going above the canvas. So what I need to do is basically overshoot the canvas so that one more row is sitting at the top. So I'm going to, while it's selected, hold my finger down and hit duplicate and then drag that to the bottom. Now I could clean this up if I want at this point, because technically I don't need this second row. It's not doing anything. So I'm just going to delete it. You can leave it in there if you want. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to show in the final tile. One last thing that we need to do is to complete the bottom of this because these bullseyes at the bottom are sitting well above where the rest of them are. 
So what we want to do is find one of the short layers, so the four bullseyes, that's at the very top of the canvas, and that's going to be in the second to last layer, because remember this one is beyond the canvas technically. So we wanna go here, select that shorter layer. I'm going to duplicate it, and I want to drag that duplicate all the way to the top of the stack so it's sitting above everything else. Now from here, I'm going to use the Transform Studio to tell Designer that I want to offset it 4,000 on the Y. So I'll click on that, plus 4,000, and that's going to complete my pattern. I have no gaps at the top. The ones at the bottom are looking like waves now instead of bullseyes, and I'm ready to test the pattern. I'm going to select the pattern tile and go to my assets, and I'll add asset from selection. Then go right over to the other artboard, engage my gradient tool, and add that as a fill. Now I can scale down. If I hold my finger on the canvas, it'll keep it straight. I can zoom in and I'm not seeing any gaps, no white space with the canvas behind. I'm not seeing anything cut off. This looks good and I'm ready to export this to use on my print on demand sites. If you have any questions or perhaps a request for a specific tutorial here on my channel, let me know in the comments below. And if you like my teaching style, I recommend checking out my full length classes on Skillshare, as well as my own learning site, The Creator Collage. I've linked both below. And if you do want to learn more about circular geometric patterns like this one, I have an entire class dedicated to three fun circular patterns, which I'll also link below. I have lots more tutorials coming to YouTube, but in the meantime, you might want to check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.